Stay Frosty 2, the Atari 2600 sequel to Stay Frosty 1. Now, while I've not actually played Stay Frosty 1, I can only assume that at the end of the game you do manage to successfully stay frosty. Because if you didn't, there simply would not be room for a sequel. Although you would not imagine that Frosty's had that much experience with staying frosty when looking at the game's cartridge cover, which has a depiction of what I assume to be Frosty the Snowman sitting in front of a roaring fire. And while looking at the cartridge now, I only just noticed that the entire title is actually Stay Frosty 2 Stay Frostier, which is even better than just Stay Frosty 2. The artwork on the cartridge is really just fantastic, and looks like it's being taken straight out of a Christmas greeting card. However, as soon as you boot up Stay Frosty 2, you quickly learn that beautiful artwork is not exclusive to the cover art, because this game is really gorgeous. The title screen has Frosty himself, one of the flame baddies that you later come to fight, a couple of ice cubes, a surprisingly detailed depiction of your pleasure stick, and at the top of the screen the title Stay Frosty 2 Stay Frostier, which quite amazingly looks even better in Atari graphics than it does on the cartridge. This is, as far as I've seen in Atari games, an extreme rarity. Speaking of extreme rarities, this game not only has a great range of sound effects, but also has an entire soundtrack. I'm not entirely certain exactly how many songs this soundtrack consists of, but I would say it's at least six, which is unprecedented, because most Atari 2600 games don't have one song, let alone six or more. Each song is appropriately Christmassy, with the playlist including but not limited to Deck the Whole, Silent Night, and God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. Although, interestingly enough, as far as I could tell, the Christmas Carol Frosty the Snowman, of which Frosty the Snowman originates, does not actually appear to be on the playlist. But as far as I'm aware, that song is not actually in the public domain, so that would probably be the reason why. Moving on from the fantastic soundtrack, the gameplay of the game is also equally fantastic. You can make Frosty go left and right using your pleasure stick, and make him jump using your big red button. Aside from Frosty's inability to climb ladders, it kind of works a lot like Donkey Kong. However, unlike Donkey Kong in Stay Frosty 2 Stay Frostier, your objective is not just to get to the top, but instead to kill all of the enemies on the screen, which will make a flashing arrow appear, and if you go into said arrow, it'll take you to the next level. Although I suppose in Donkey Kong's defense, in the second level, you're actually having to jump over those platforms, which is not just getting to the top. But still, it's a very different game, it just has slightly similar controls. But I digress. By using your pleasure stick and utilizing your red button, you can move Frosty around the screen, allowing him to collect items and kill enemies. These enemies come in the form of sentient flames, which, despite Frosty's apathy towards them on the game cartridge, can actually damage and or kill Frosty. The game mechanic used to defeat these enemies is actually quite interesting. Frosty the Snowman must be positioned over the enemy, and so using his own frozen flesh douses the flame. In doing so, Frosty will melt slightly, and if he melts too much, he will die and you will lose a life. Therefore, it seems that in Stay Frosty 2 Stay Frostier, the only way to defeat evil in the world is self-sacrifice, and Frosty is quite literally sacrificing himself for our salvation. In this case, Frosty takes up the mantle of a messiah-type figure, which is perhaps very suiting for the Christmas season. However, unlike the great late Jesus H. Christ, Frosty the Snowman can replenish his health by picking up ice cubes. Just as moving over top of the flame bad guys diminishes Frosty's health, moving over top of the ice cubes replenishes it. However, ice cubes are not the only item and or power-up available to Frosty. A quick look at the attractively decorated manual tells us that there are seven items available, including the broom, the corncob pipe, the snowflake, the branch, the carrot, the ice chest, and the coal. All of these items have individual effects on Frosty, with the broom allowing you to double jump, meaning that clicking the red button a second time will make him jump a second time, the corncob pipe, which makes Frosty practically invulnerable for a certain amount of time, the snowflake, which places back all the ice cubes on the screen that you've already removed, the branch that moves walls, which I'll get to a bit later, the carrot, which allows you to throw things, which I'll also get to a bit later, the ice chest, which unlike the ice cube, restores all, not just some of Frosty's health, and the coal, which reveals invisible platforms, which I'll also get to in a bit later. It is, however, interesting that the manual does not mention the ice cubes as an item, considering that they perform basically the same function, albeit diminished as the ice chest, and that the snowflake refers to it, and especially that they're literally the most common item in the game, it is quite bizarre that they left it out. 
The manual also lists a second group of other elements that can help or hinder your mission, which they've labeled other elements that can help or hinder your mission. However, this group, just like the previous one, fails to mention the ice cubes. This group includes the fireball enemies that I spoke of earlier, presents, lava platforms, walls, elevators, fire birds, which by the way have the coolest in-game art I've seen in any Atari 2600 game so far, and the gas canisters. It is in no small part due to this large array of items that I actually enjoyed Stay Frosty 2 far more than I enjoyed Donkey Kong. You see, in Donkey Kong, the entire game really entirely depends on your reflexes, with how well you do depending on how well you can jump over cookies that roll at an increasingly fast speed, and magic lamps that behave increasingly erratically. However, over in Stay Frosty 2, while reflexes are still part of the game, they are exactly that. They are only part of the game, and really there's a much larger emphasis on problem solving. These problems that you have to solve mostly arise from the fact that Frosty melts, and that you have to melt Frosty in order to kill the enemies to pass the levels. Because there's also a finite number of ice cubes on the screen that can heal Frosty, this means that you're constantly weighing up your odds. Should you pick up the ice cube now and then kill the enemy, or should you kill those enemies now and pick up those ice cubes? Increasing this difficulty, there are some areas that you can simply not avoid taking damage in, and also some areas you can't even get to without having taken damage. There are some enemies you can't reach, and so can only take them down by throwing globs of your own icy flesh at them after picking up the carrot up. And there are some enemies you can't get to without picking up the branch which moves the walls out of the way. Increasing this difficulty even further, as time goes on, Frosty will melt, and also you find yourself faced by the Firebirds, which steal your carrot upgrades, which can be a total pain in your frosted buttocks, and they're also indefeatable, so you best just avoid them. As the levels go on, you'll find yourself increasingly coming across more enemies with less ice cube, and you essentially get to a point where every single ice cube matters. Adding to the mystery and intrigue of the game, if you perform certain tasks, you can also unlock secret levels. So far, I've only discovered one, and it was by complete accident, but I would be less than surprised if there are plenty more. Speaking of levels, Stay Frosty 2, unlike Donkey Kong, does not have two levels that repeats, but instead has, well, a lot of them. And at this point, in the interest of full disclosure, I have to admit that we actually had to bend the rules here for this one. You see here at Channel Grim and Grin, we've got a policy of only reviewing games we've actually finished. And, well, I've not actually finished Stay Frosty 2. So you really shouldn't consider this to be a full review, but instead only part of a review. Because, since I've not finished the game, I can only review part of it. After putting in a fairly long time playing the game, I managed to get up to level 22. And I convinced myself that surely this must be close to the end of the game, because I had been playing it for so long and trying so very hard. So I decided to look up in the manual to see if it gave any indication of how close I was to the end, expecting there to be a couple more levels. But it turns out that Stay Frosty 2 in fact has 32 distinct levels, which sort of blows Donkey Kong's 2 out of the water. Furthermore, these 32 levels repeat 4 times, getting more difficult each time you pass the 32 levels which comes to a grand total of 128 levels. This means that despite my season-long effort of playing the game, getting me up to level 22 means I was not even halfway through the game. Despite this knowledge, Grimm and I decided that I should do this review anyway, because it's better than not having any Christmas special for Grin reviews. What this means for me is that Stay Frosty 2 is the gift that keeps on giving, because next Christmas season I'm going to be able to just bust out Stay Frosty 2 and try to get further than I did. And what this means for you is that you really should take this review with a grain of salt, because essentially since I did not even get through half the game, it's sort of like watching a review of a movie from someone who only watched the first part of the movie. So despite me admittedly lacking the knowledge required to give a full review of this game, what can I tell you that I haven't told you so far? Well, firstly, the mere experience of having so much trouble passing the game can tell you that it's very difficult. The game also only gives you four lives and two continues, which means aside from bonus lives, which are far and few between, appearing every 20,000 points, you only have 12 lives in total to complete the entire 128 levels. Is this unfairly difficult? No, but it's definitely challenging. And because it is so challenging, whenever you do manage to unlock a new level, it does give you a great sense of achievement. And I'm definitely looking forward to slapping the game in next Christmas and having another crack at it. So there you have it, Stay Frosty 2 Stay Frostier. Easily one of the most challenging and beautiful games on the Atari 2600, and definitely the one with the biggest soundtrack. So if you're looking for a fantastic Christmas-themed game to play this holiday season, head down to your local video store and pick up a copy of Stay Frosty 2, Stay Frostier, for the Atari 2600.